Solving General Chemistry Problems Thermodynamics A common problem in general chemistry involves the calculation of pressure volume work associated with a gas. The problem is generally organized around a cylindrical piston which is declared to be massless and moves with no friction. The gas inside the cylinder body is the system being explored. One controls the external pressure by either placing weights on the piston or by imagining the whole object placed inside another chamber whose pressure we can control. As well, we imagine that the body of the cylinder is equipped with latches or stops that allow us to hold the piston at some point or stop its motion at another point. We can also let the piston move freely until it finds an equilibrium position with the external pressure. The system, which is the gas in the cylinder, is characterized by its volume, pressure, temperature, and the amount of material present. For an ideal gas, the ideal gas law describes the relations between these properties. The volume and pressure are changed by the motion of the piston. This can also affect the temperature, as can the flow of energy in the form of heat if it is allowed. The external pressure couples to the motion of the piston, which responds to pressure differentials across it. Here is the first problem. The piston is arranged with an initial volume of 10 liters and is filled with a gas we can treat as being ideal. The external pressure is adjusted to 10 bar. The internal pressure is 1 bar. The latch on the piston is released and the volume decreases to 5 liters where it runs into another stop on the cylinder. What is the work involved here? What is the internal pressure at the end? The equation for calculating work is W equals minus P external delta V. The change in volume, delta V, equals v, uh, the final volume minus the initial volume, or 5 minus 10, or minus 5 liters. Delta V is negative because the system volume decreases. Substitute in to get W equals minus 10 bar times minus 5 liters, or plus 50 liter bars. A more recognizable unit of work would be the joule. Remember that uh, uh, 1 liter bar is equal to 100 joules. Therefore, 50 liter bar is equal to 5,000 joules or 5 kilojoules. Because the work is positive, energy is going into the system, raising its internal energy. We would say that the surroundings have performed 5 kilojoules of work on the system. P1V1 equals P2V2 is used to find the final internal pressure. Remember to use the internal pressure, not the external pressure. Because the system volume was cut in half, and since it is an ideal gas, obeying the ideal gas law, its pressure must have doubled to 2 bar. Consider a slight variation on the problem. Let the initial internal pressure be 2 bar instead of 1 bar. Now you could do this by filling the piston with twice as much gas as at the beginning. Does this change the result? Well, the work calculation is based only on external pressure, which has not changed. The volume change is the same, so W equals 5 kilojoules is still the work done on the system. The difference, of course, is that the final internal pressure is now 4 bar. Another slight variation. Let the initial internal pressure be 6 bar. Does this change things? The work calculation seems to be the same again, but the final internal pressure would be 6 times 2 equals 12 bar. This is greater than the external pressure, so it could not actually be compressed all the way to 5 liters. The question describes impossible events and does not have an answer. In fact, the system would be compressed until the internal pressure equaled the external pressure of 10 bar. The ideal gas law allows us to use P1V1 equals P2V2, and we see that the final volume would be 6 liters. The change in volume now is only 6 minus 10, or minus 4 liters, and the work done by the surroundings on the system is just 4 kilojoules. Now here are a couple things you might want to consider when reflecting on these problems. Why does the work calculation employ the external pressure? You might think that the system's internal pressure would be more relevant. Well, consider a circus strong man at the beach and his friend, the well-known 98-pound weakling. They both lift a weight to the very same height. The work being done is the same in both cases because it has to do with the mass of the weight and the distance it is being lifted. It might be easier for the strong man to lift the weight but the work accomplished is the same in both cases. In the same way, the important pressure to be considered here is that on the outside, the external pressure, because that is the weight that is being lifted, or the weight that is pushing down on the system. 
You might also ask, what happens to this energy when it goes into the system? How is the system different? Well, when you transfer energy, whether via heat or work, into or out of a system, one obvious effect is to change the system's temperature. A rise in internal energy would produce a rise in temperature. Have you ever used a bicycle pump? You might notice that it gets warm when you use it. When you push down on it, you are doing work, increasing the internal energy of the gas and increasing the temperature. Since the walls of the pump are not well insulated, some energy also leaves in the form of heat, which is what you are feeling. This is a straightforward relationship for an ideal gas, but in the case of a real gas, it can be more complicated. For instance, a compression might induce a phase change from the gas to the liquid, with a lot of work being done because the volume change is so large. However, the internal energy is still increasing, even though the temperature may not be changing. In general chemistry problems, however, we are usually discussing an ideal gas. We may also specify whether or not we allow heat to transfer across the piston walls. A process may be specified as being isothermal, and then if energy goes in as work, a positive W, then the same amount of energy must come out as heat, a negative Q. And by the first law of thermodynamics, the overall internal energy change, delta U equals zero, and the system's temperature is constant. And what about our use of P1, V1 equals P2, V2? Now recall where that relationship comes from, the ideal gas law. So there is this first condition, and then there is a second condition. And then if the amount of material does not change, and if the temperature is the same, then we can use P1, V1 equals P2, V2. But if we do not specify isothermal conditions, then temperature can be changing, and we can't use the expression as is. Our problems, given above, needed to specify isothermal in order to have found the final pressures or the final volumes when they were not otherwise controlled by the experiment.